On this week's edition of the Left Bench TV, a look at a big name coming to the Maryland football team. A sit-down with Maryland Wrestling's biggest fan. And an update on the Maryland men's basketball team. How their win on Saturday is moving them up. The Left Bench TV starts now. W's across the board this week, and the Terps doing some damage. Welcome to Left Bench TV. I'm Danielle Stein. And I'm Joe Alardi. A lot of those teams making moves up in the polls and hoping to carry their momentum into the postseason. That's true. One of those teams wrapping up their regular seasons is men's basketball. And they're returning to the Xfinity Center after a monster road win over ranked Iowa. And the Terps came back to quite the lively environment. They would face Ohio State for the annual whiteout, and Rachel Hirschheimer was there for all the action. It was electric in College Park this afternoon, a nearly sold out game, even SVP stopped by for the Terps Buckeyes rematch. Young Terps showing off their moves, dogs flying, and Scott Van Pelt all here for the action. First half, Maryland struggling to get on the board in the first few minutes, but Anthony Cowan finds his groove early, scoring a game-high 19 points and four assists to rally a lead. Struggling offensively in the first few minutes of play, the sophomore Bruno Fernando, but he figured out a way around the Buckeyes defense in the second half, scoring 14 points to help keep Maryland in the lead. Fans were on their feet the entire time as Ohio came close to taking the lead. But it were buckets like this one from freshman Aaron Wiggins in the final minutes that helped propel Maryland's offense. Terps beat the Buckeyes 72-62. Our guys were locked in. We just can't get out of our own way the first five minutes of the game. Once we figure that out and we figure out turnovers, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We just couldn't get, our stop, get the stop we needed. Um, our crowd did a really good job of, of keeping us in the game. Um, but like I said, when we went on the lower scoring, uh, we could we could never just get that one last stop. Um, and that helped them out a lot. Brandon, the Terps really struggled in the first half, and in the second half, they really picked it up. What did Mark Turgeon say that he changed a little bit for them to end up winning? Well, in his press conference, he mentioned how the energy in the Xfinity Center helped get the team going after their slow start. And in the second half, Bruno Fernando had 14 points after being held scoreless in the first half. So they started to feed him more, and he was more effective at scoring inside. And the trips will be at Penn State on Wednesday. What can we expect for that game? Yeah, so Penn State is currently last in the Big Ten, but they've been playing much better as of late. So if Maryland wants to get the win, they need to bring the same energy they brought in the second half today. Well, the Terps will be on the road in Happy Valley on Wednesday at 6.30 against Penn State. The Terps have already faced the Nittany Lions once this season, coming out with a 66-59 win back in December. And with the new AP rankings out yesterday, Maryland is moving up, now at 17th in the nation. Another team that's making their presence known in the rankings is the second-ranked women's lacrosse team. They picked up their 79th straight home win against the number three North Carolina Tar Heels on Sunday. Terps got off on the right foot here thanks to a first-half hat trick from Jen Giles. Take a look at her just cutting right through that defense. Terps take a 9-4 lead into the half. But the Heels outscored the Terps 8-3 in the second half. And despite the onslaught, Megan Taylor stood strong, notching seven second-half saves to send this one to overtime tied at 12. In double OT, after coming back from a second-half injury, Caroline Steele weaves in and out and buries the game winner. Look at it here, skip off the turf. Terps win 13 to 12. Here's what Steele had to say about her golden goal. I looked up and I saw the goal and then I kind of like for a split second it went through my head and I was like I think I might be like at the 12 but then I shot it and I saw it go in and I literally was just like oh my god I mean it was like it was so much so awesome and I just couldn't wait to like celebrate with my teammates. With their second top five win of the season Kathy Reese's squad improves to 3-0. and Next up is UMBC on Wednesday. From late heroics in one game to the next, the women's basketball team was looking to rebound after one of their only losses of the season, and they did so in dramatic fashion. Terps facing Minnesota at the Xfinity Center, and the Golden Gophers got the early jump, 
They led through every quarter, even holding a 16-point advantage over Maryland in the third. But the Terps would not give up, led by junior Kyla Charles. What a season she's having. She had a monster night, putting up 29 points. Maryland would claw their way back in the fourth, and here's where you're going to want to stand up. All tied up, just 6.6 .6 seconds left off the deflection. Kyla Charles grabs the ball and sprints up the floor, finishing with a lefty layup right at the buzzer. Terps grab the win, 71-69. Um, you know, this ranks up there uh, when you talk about uh, just a really uh, incredible special win for us and um, just love the, the way that we had to fight and, and claw and scratch and I think it speaks volumes to, uh, you know, the character and the competitiveness that we have in this locker room. And Kyla Charles was named Big Ten Player of the Week after her outstanding effort. Just one more game left on their regular season slate. They gear up for March Madness beginning in just a few short weeks. Ranked now as number eighth in the country, we can only expect to see the Terps land a high seed in the tournament. Maryland football is getting ready to say goodbye to some familiar faces and welcome new ones with open arms. Zach Solon sat down with football analyst Daniel Oyafusi to talk Terps past, present, and future. Thanks, guys. The biggest news coming out of Maryland football last week is that former Virginia Tech starting quarterback Josh Jackson is transferring to Maryland and will be immediately eligible to play next season. Daniel, that is a big name. How important is he going to be for the Terps next season? It's definitely going to be an important addition in the aspect that he provides a dimension through the air, passing the ball that Maryland just hasn't had in the past couple of years, whether it's Kasima Hill or Tyler Pilgrim, Josh Jackson in his first year at Virginia Tech threw for almost 3,000 yards. Maryland really didn't come close to that. Um, starting Kasim Hill and then Tyrell program later on. So he's definitely going to have the opportunity to start when he gets to College Park. And now looking back to last year's team, the NFL scouting combine is coming up and Maryland is sending three players, Byron Cowart, Derwin Gray, and Darnell Savage to Indianapolis for the combine. What can we expect to see from these guys as they try to go pro? Well, all three of them are mid to late round draft prospects, so we're looking at fourth to the seventh round, maybe even undrafted. So this is really the opportunity for them to set themselves apart from their counterparts at the positions. When you're looking at somebody like Daniel Savage, you're hoping that he can perform well in the positional drills, maybe even run the sub four or five time and really boost his draft stock. And then when you see guys like Byron Coward and Derwin Gray, these are guys that coming out of high school, they were top recruits. So there's obviously some talent there. So like I said with Darnell, you want them to run well, you want them to perform well, and then you perform well off the field in the interviews with teams and maybe they'll catch a team's eye. And finally, this is a new look Maryland football team. Almost an entirely new coaching staff led by new head coach Mike Loxley and they have a lot of big time players coming in. Now I know the season's a really long time away still, but what are your very early predictions for next year's Maryland football team? I think that with everything that happened last season and the turnover with the coaching staff, Mike Loxley did a really good job of keeping current players in the program, keeping them from transferring, and then making the most of his limited recruiting time. He nabbed the top offense and defensive player in the state of Maryland. So I think that you'll see a really competitive team. There's still a lot of work to be done until the Terps can compete with the big time teams in the Big Ten like Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State, but you'll see a competitive team next season. Thank you, Daniel. Be sure to follow Daniel and the left bench for all of our Maryland football coverage. Joe and Danielle, back to you. Thanks, guys. And some of those faces we just saw are at Chipotle here in College Park last night to help raise money for the Jordan McNair Foundation in honor of their late teammate. The Maryland Athletics Compliance Office approved a flyer for the players to distribute for the foundation started by McNair's parents. The foundation's mission is to educate student athletes, parents, and the football community about the signs and dangers of heat stroke and other heat-related illnesses. The Student Athletic Advisory Committee showed up in support with some familiar faces like basketball superstar Bruno Fernando. Other teammates and Maryland athletes voiced their support of the cause using the hashtag OneMaryland. New head coach Mike Loxley was also in attendance and made a difference himself. He reportedly camped out at the register for some time and paid for the first $790 spent by customers in honor of Jordan McNair's jersey number 79. The men's lacrosse team defeated in-state rival Navy this weekend in Annapolis, scoring a season high of 14 goals. The Terps had a slow start with every point on the board being matched within minutes by Navy, but it picked up quickly in the second quarter. Midfielder Logan Wisniewski's powers through the defense and dives in from the left wing, scoring for Maryland and capturing the lead. Attackman Lewis Dubik was unstoppable, scoring five goals, a career high for the senior. The heroics of Wisnowskis and Dubik led Maryland to a 14-9 win, pushing their record to 5-0. 
Here's what head coach John Tillman had to say about the duo. Yeah, I mean, we have those guys have good chemistry. Um, they're all really skilled. They're very unselfish. Um, you know, Lou's an excellent cutter, and, um, and and Logan's a great feeder and shooter, and Jared's, you know, a really good feeder as well. So we had guys in pretty good spots, and um, a lot of times they covered it up, but when there were opportunities, I felt like these guys took advantage of it. The undefeated second rig Terps will return to action on the road next Sunday as they face Notre Dame. And as the lacrosse team works through the first part of its season, the wrestling team wrapped up its home schedule on Friday against number 16 Rutgers. 125 pounder Brandon Cray led off with this big takedown and later closed the deal after locking down a point for riding time. Next up was Phil Spadafora in the 165 pound class, holding off Stefan Glasgow 5 to 4. 197 pounder Nico Capello then took his match thanks to this slam and a strong reversal right here. And who else to cap it off but Yusuf Hamida? It wasn't even close as the big man notched three takedowns on the way to his fourth conference victory of the season. Here's what he had to say about his final win at the Pavilion. I've grown a lot in Maryland, my time here, wrestling all these matches. You know, I really like this, 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 uh, I'm gonna miss this feeling, you know, come after a win in front of a home crowd, you know, but it just meant the world that, you know, it's night. I mean, it hasn't fully hit me yet, but it's gonna hit me later. That's like my last time wrestling out here, so, yeah. Through the wrestling team's ups and downs, one thing has remained constant, a very vocal supporter. Annabelle Jansons takes us to the Xfinity Pavilion to show us what Terp Pride really means. Many fans came out to support the Maryland wrestling team on senior night, but one in particular got them on their feet. Meet Robin Ficker. He is the biggest fan of the Maryland wrestling team and has been following them for years. I used to uh, come and watch Maryland wrestle when they wrestled in Cole Fieldhouse when Sully Krause was a coach. I've been following them a long time and they're getting better and better. He is the loudest on the sidelines and passion is an understatement. Maryland wrestlers are better looking, they're smarter, they're quicker, they've got better moves, their hair cuts better. These other guys need a shave, obviously. Maryland has a much better wrestling team. They're number one. Being a wrestling fan is just his side gig. Robin Figger is well known around here. He's an attorney and real estate broker and even ran for office over 20 times for Montgomery County. The players and coaches are definitely aware of his sideline heckling. From 2010 to 2015, 16, you know, he was traveling and going to all of our competitions and all that. And um, you know, he took a little break and now he's back. So it brings a different dynamic to it. Some people like it, some people don't, but you know, if you're cheering for Maryland, you know, I can, uh, I can't be upset about that. Robin Ficker is the ultimate hype man for the team and will continue to support the Chirps for the rest of the season. For the left bench, I'm Annabelle Jansons. It was a good day this past Sunday for Robin as the wrestling team finished their regular season with a win in New Jersey over Ryder 22-16. After dropping two of three in Conway, South Carolina, the Maryland baseball team came back to College Park for their first home games of the season with a weekend series against Maine. The Terps would take the first two games of the series in a Friday doubleheader and were looking for the sweep on Sunday. The Terps' bats were hot to start the game. In the first inning, Maxwell Costas drove in a two-run off a double to the left field corner. Costas would finish the day with four RBIs, making him the first freshman to have four ribbies in a game since his older brother Marty did it in 2016. Still in the first, Michael Pinero would say bye-bye baseball, sending this three-run shot to deep right and making it a 5-0 game. Moving to the bottom of the second, Randy Bednar tattooed this pitch sending it over the right left field fence to add one more to the Terps' lead with his second homer of the series. Maine, looking for their first win this season, would claw back in this game, first putting up this one on the board with a solo shot to left. Then in the sixth, Maine would add three more off a pitch from Sean Hine, making it a two-run game. The Black Bears would tie the game off a fielder's choice and a single in the seventh after six unanswered runs. The Terps would answer in the bottom of the inning, though, taking the lead thanks to a bat from Taylor Wright, bringing home outfielder Caleb Walls. And in the ninth, pitcher John Murphy struck out the side to secure the sweep for the Terrapins and extend their winning streak to four games. Maryland coach Rob Vaughn talked after the game about the Terps' bullpen coming up big for the team late.
being able to pass off to the next guy. I thought our pitching staff just did a really nice job today in a team effort setting. There were individual performances that maybe weren't as good as they would have liked, but as a group, they picked each other up, and I was really proud of the way they competed. The Terps will head down to Richmond on Tuesday to play their second game, their second game this season against the VCU Rams and keep their winning streak alive. On Friday night, Maryland Gymnastics took to the floor at the Big Five competition in Toledo, competing against four other Big Ten rivals. And they came up big with a score of 195.5, which is their second highest score of the season. A huge night for senior Alex Robinson, who put up a career best 9.825 on the floor. Iowa came out on top, though, with a total score of 196.45. Some really tight competition all around. Next, the Jim Terps return to College Park, taking on local rival George Washington on Friday. Big weekend for Maryland softball, playing in the Amy S. Harrison Classic in Riverdale, California, winning three games out of five on the West Coast. The Terps, featuring a very young team, sit at nine wins so far on the season, which is half of their total from all of last season. Freshman Taylor Okada is getting off to a hot start in her college career, leading the team in hits and runs scored. Junior Anna Kupta has also been a huge contributing factor with RBIs already this season. Maryland is now heading south this weekend with four games at the Carolina Classic in Chapel Hill. The tennis team continued their spring season away from College Park this past week, and they took down Delaware last weekend in Newark before heading up to New York and falling 6-1 to one to the number 38 team, Columbia. Senior Millie Stretton was the lone Terp to win in Columbia, gaining the te her team-high fourth singles victory. The Terps now come back home to take on William & Mary on March 1st. It's been an amazing week this week. We saw so many high caliber plays across the board, some even getting some national attention. Yeah, we saw shout outs from Scott Van Pell, a bunch of Terps making it into the national spotlight. So a great week to be here for sure. Absolutely. And now we'll show you our top five plays of the week. Starting now at number five, going back to the diamond. Game three of the weekend for the series, Maryland going for the sweep, and they would be wiping the floors indeed. Sophomore Michael Panero putting the air in Panero, diving to make this catch. They would go on for the 9-6 win and get the series dub. Coming in at number four, look out. It's sophomore Logan Wisnowskis. Check out that diving goal. Number three, six seconds tied up, tipped over to Kyla Charles. She says good night to Minnesota. Coming in at number two here, watch freshman Aaron Wiggins just take off for the thundering slam against OSU. Somebody get this man a pilot's license. And number one, what is better than this? Caroline Steele, after being injured now in double overtime, and she rips it in for the win against rival UNC. And sticking with women's lax, our Terp of the Week is Megan Taylor. The senior goalie was outstanding in the heated matchup against UNC. She picked up 14 saves in the win and had some highlight caliber plays toward the end of regulation and in overtime. She led her defense to hold the Tar Heels in both periods of sudden death overtime. And our Pro Terp of the Week is none other than Jake Lehman. We know you've seen him here before, the, nice, the man with the nicest hair in basketball. Portland Trailblazer has become a key player off the bench for a team that is fighting for the top four spot in the Western Conference. Lehman, who's averaging eight points and three boards per game so far this season, had 17 points off the bench the other night against the Golden State Warriors and iced the game with a huge three late. Look at that shrug from the former Terra, pulling the MJ down. It's a pretty good power move, I would say, right there. It's great for Jake Lehman and all. I'm happy for him, but one thing, if you want to see the nicest hair in basketball, come watch me play intramurals on Sunday <laughs> nights. The flow's out. It's a great time. I think I'll stick to Jake Lehman. But that is all we have for this episode of The Left Bench TV. You can catch up on all things on Facebook and on Twitter at The Left Bench and stay up with our coverage on theleftbench.com. I'm Danielle Stein. And I'm Joe Alardi. Thanks for watching.